Hey, good morning, everyone. Good morning, good morning, all of you online. Uh, I want to tell you all how uh, special the body of Christ is. Uh, we talked about that this morning in, in, in uh, Bible study, and we continue to talk about it over and over again. Uh, you know, I love how the, the Lord's Supper, when Paul says, brought up so many great things, and, and then the su- singing, just so many encouraging things, and, and the body is so unique. And I encourage everyone to get, be part of the body, not just to show up, but be part of the body, because you're, you're the body of Christ, you know? We're the body of Christ. We're not just uh, the body of at the cross, you know? We're not just, that's not it, you know? We're, we're the body of Christ, and each one of us is very important and plays an important role in it. This morning, I'm going to talk about the road less traveled. Always been a, a thought in my mind, uh, Whatever you will, will, however stock you put in certain things, but the, the phrase that Robert, Cross, uh, Robert Frost said, two rows diverged in a wood, and I took the one less traveled by, and that has made all the difference. I, it always resonated in my brain, ever since the first time I ever heard that, you know, because for some strange reason, I've always taken the road less traveled. It, it's just been ingrained in me God had just has blessed me with that thought process from from a little boy right on up until this very moment and it, and it has made all the difference in the world I, I want you to know that um, it's time to take the road less traveled if you're taking the, the road that the world takes if you desire a lot of those things the world desires and, and are not placing God a number one in your path you're not taking the road less traveled you're not doing what God wants you to do. You're doing what you want to do. And, and so it, that's what this message is all about. We're going to talk a lot about Moses today. I was going to include Joshua, but I, um, I was putting this lesson together last night, and I sent Nick a text. I said, cut out half of the lesson. because <laughs> it's, going to, it's going to go on two hours. But, uh, no. And, uh, and also, it, ju- it just made sense to me. You know, I don't know how you deal with God, but whenever uh, I always try to feel the will of God in my life and I think we need to do that we need to feel and experience the will of God in our lives we need to be open to his word in a special way and if you do do, do that you're going to take the road less traveled you're going to stop what you're doing and go the direction he wants you to go it happens to me all the time in business and uh, and I'm so thankful because being in business for pretty much all my life I've made many many mistakes and, you know, I'm almost 70 years old. I've been in business since I was 25. And, uh, and I've been in a lot of different businesses, and I've made a lot of mistakes. And I've finally learned, hey, be quiet and listen to the good Lord. Be quiet and listen to the good Lord. You know, have my ideas, and I do. I have a lot of them. My kids will say my brain never stops working. But at the same time, I get into the scriptures. I spend a lot of time in prayer. I I do the things that God wants me to do, and he directs my path so I can take that road less traveled. I pray you would do that starting today. Um, So anyways, that that sort of of inspires me. And, uh, you know, if we think about the road less traveled, there's no better example than Jesus Christ, right? There's no better example than our Lord and Savior. You know, from creation... From creation, Jesus was there. From in the very beginning, he was there. You know, throughout the Old Testament, he's there. Jesus is there in the Old Testament too. To the manger, to a little manger where donkeys go to be there, he was there. He was in that little manger. Uh, to loving and, and uh, preaching and teaching to his fellow Jews, he was there with compassion and fire. And, and he was there. Jesus was there. And, and then he took on the devil. He was there. He took on the devil. He took on the devil. He, he, he carried his own cross. All right? He took quite a road. He just didn't... T- he, he, he could have done it a lot easier in, in my mind, right? You know, God could have sent him down, said his, word, said his peace, and gone back up. But no, he was our example on how that we need to run our lives how we need to, to be passionate and follow that road less traveled. He was butchered beyond all recognition for you and I. He went to that cross. He was there. He, he took that road. He took it to the cross. He took it to the grave. He took it uh, into a supernatural resurrection. 
supernatural resurrection and appeared to many all at the same time. And he's on the, he's on the throne right now. He's our, he's our example. He's, he's the one we need to pattern our very walk after. We need to be willing to do those things. And how do we do it? His word. Empower the Holy Spirit. It's so simple. It's so simple. So today, my brethren, I pray that you would uh, experience that road less traveled. Let's uh, read together Matthew chapter 7, verse 13 and 14. Enter through the narrow gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the road that leads to destruction. And many enter through it, but small is the gate, and narrow the road that leads to life, and only a few find it. Here is Jesus giving us some words of wisdom. So I, I sort of sort of wrote something about the two roads. All right, so when I picture these scriptures, I picture this. It's sort of like a funnel. Let's see, see this funnel? So we like to enter through that wide gate when we can do all the things we want to do. All right, we want our cake and eat it too. So we enter through, Jesus warns us about leading, running through that wide gate. Here in this funnel. And what does that wide gate do? It narrows and narrows and narrows and narrows. If you don't have Jesus, you go to hell. All right, so that's what Jesus is warning you and I about. So it's, it's some great scripture here. But think about it as two roads. All right, this is one road. I'm not going to show you the other road yet. But... This is, this is for later in the lesson. But just imagine that. And so so the, the key that I want to bring out here is that Jesus tells us, don't, don't use a wide gate. Don't do what all the other people are doing. Why would you, why would you do it that way when, when we have a Lord and Savior who did things totally different? Totally different. And uh, stay away from that wide gate. Don't even be tempted by that wide gate because we all are. We all have been. And we see our friends and family playing with that wide gate. So I'm passionate about it. And I don't want anybody I know to go in that wide gate. I know where that wide gate ends, ends up. All right, without Jesus, there ain't no hope. So that's what Jesus is bringing out right now. And so be careful. Be careful. Uh, always pay attention to what the Word of God has to say. You know, the, and the end result is destruction and hell for those who don't have Jesus Christ. Uh, notice verse 14 says, But you can enter the... But you can enter the narrow part. That's where Christ is. He is the way. He's the truth and the light. When we enter the narrow gate, through that gate, like the sheep went into that narrow gate, Jesus, as Jesus' sheep, they went to that narrow gate. They, they, they wouldn't be able to wander because they knew he was the, the way, the truth, and the light. And Jesus says, I am the gate. The thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. But I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. I think so many times people miss that part. Jesus came, and granted, he suffered and died, and, and we, we sometimes wonder why we go through what we do. But I'm telling you, when you serve Jesus Christ, you have life and you have it to the full. We have to believe that. That's God's, God's word and honest truth, and I'm, I'm here to tell you it's true. I'm here to tell you it's true. And, and we need to stand on that. Matthew 7, 21 through 23. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and in your name drive out demons and in your name perform many miracles? miracles? Then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Away from you, you evildoers. Jesus really uh, hits the nail on the head as far as falling Satan, falling, uh, being a, a hypocritical Christian who does not do anything that the Bible says. Jesus will not have anything to do with that, and we need to have nothing to do with that. We need to focus on Jesus and Jesus alone and his word. Get into Bible study. Get into a fellowship where you have Christians that spur you on to, to build you up in Jesus Christ. To let the Holy Spirit work in your life and all around you in this body that we have right here and everywhere we go, because that's what Jesus will do. So Jesus gives us a warning here. So I want to get back, I want to get into Moses right now. And in your bulletin, it says, Moses, Moses, Moses. And uh, what, a, what a great example to me of a man who's just like you and me. Just like you and me. 
Moses was no different than you and me. All right, so don't put Moses up on this big pedestal just because he wrote you know, the first book, books of the Bible. I wish I could have written them, but you know, it didn't work that way. But Moses was used by God. He was a normal man who went through incredible things. We're going to read about how Moses took that weird road less traveled, and he, he really did. So 40 years, he was in Pharaoh's palace in Egypt. He could have been king of Egypt if he had stayed in the palace. He was raised to be a king. So first 40 years, Moses, boy, he was living the, the dream. He was living luxury. Second 40 years, he, God sends him out to the desert in Midian. All right, he says, you're going you're gonna to be my vessel, Moses. I'm going to put you in the desert. You're going you're gonna to take care of all the, everything that they do in the desert. The Lord knows what they do in the desert, but I wouldn't want to be in no desert. But Moses was sent there by God to serve 40 years in the desert to, to get his act together. Then, for, of course, his last 40 years was wandering around the wilderness as a leader of Israel. And that was what we know Moses probably best for, is how he wandered around with the Israelites, God's people, and, and led them in a in fantastic and great way. So I don't know about you, but I can relate to Moses. You know, I look at my life this way. 20 years, I was living the dream. Rick Davis was living the dream. I was a great athlete. I, I played sports. I accomplished a lot of things. I went to Ted Williams baseball camp. I, I was the oldest of seven kids. I was living the dream. First 20 years. The second 20 years, uh, God, I finally came to the Lord when I was 20. So God started making and molding me into the Christian he wanted to be. I, did, I didn't get there right away, by the way. I didn't get there right and neither neither did you. Right? It, took, it took a while to become that Christian God wanted to be, but I had the Holy Spirit. I had the blessings of, of a great wife who was a godly woman. I had a church family that cared about me and helped me study the Bible. So that was awesome, those 20 years. Then my, my third 20 years, uh, God started really narrowing in on what I needed to do. He really narrowed in on what I needed to do. And, and I, I hope it doesn't take you until you're 40 to figure it out. But I sort of think I... I was, I was too much of myself up until 40. But finally, from 40 to 60, I finally started figuring out, these last 10 years have been awesome. I'm telling you, awesome. And I pray that you would be living your dream right now and not wait till you're 60 or 40 or 25 or 30. However old you are, the time is now. The time is now. Okay, don't wait. Don't wait till you wander in the wilderness. Okay, don't wait. Don't wait. Grab a hold of what God is telling you right now. Because you, you can start catapulting yourself in faith like you never have before. So that's sort of a, I can relate to Moses. I sort of screwed around for a few years of my life. But let's read about Moses in Exodus chapter 3, 1 through 6. <clears throat> Tremendous scriptures. I encourage you, you, you see these scriptures are in bulletin. Get your Bible out and read them later. Because I'm telling you, uh, they'll fire you up. They'll fire you up. This, you know, it's, it's okay to read along on there, and then it's easy. But take your Bible out. Get highlighting them, because they mean so much. I'm telling you, they mean so much. To me, the scriptures jump off the page of my Bible. They jump off the page. They, they're not just words. They mean so much. So 1 through 6 says, Now Moses was tending the flock of Jericho, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he led the flock to the far side of the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in flames of fire from within the bush. Moses saw that through the bush, though the bush was on fire, it did not burn up. So Moses thought, I will go over and see this strange sight. Why the bush does not burn up? When the Lord saw that he had gone over to look, God called to him from within the bush, Moses, Moses. And Moses said, here I am. Do not come any closer, God said. Take off your sandals, for the place where you are standing is holy ground. Whoa. <laughs> See what I'm saying about the scriptures, how they just jump off the page? They jump off the page to me. I, I get excited when I read the word of God. So Moses, uh, you know, it's funny, you know. So at first, he goes... Uh, he sees God in a burning bush, and it's, it doesn't burn. So God, God says to Moses, 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 and notice how God sets Moses in his place. I like how he sets Moses in his place. Do not come any closer, God says. You are standing on holy ground. 
He goes, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Notice he says, I am the God of your father, Moses. <laughs> God is speaking to Moses. So Moses hid his face. He was afraid of God. Afraid of God. So how, how, I ask you this question. How do you address God? How do you address God when you talk to him? We need to talk to God with a reverent fear. We really do. We need to appreciate the word of God with reverent fear and, and absorb it in our heart and mind. You know, as Moses would try to do, you know, because Moses is such a good example to all of us. Like, sometimes we're casual when, when it comes to God. You know, it's fun coming here. You know, we all party. We, we enjoy a lot of talks and a lot of laughs. We're casual. But when, when we worship God, it's, it's really special. It's really something that will edify you and edify everybody around you. So let's read on in Exodus 3, 10 through 15. <clears throat> so now go, <clears throat> I am sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? And God said, I will be with you, and this will be the sign to you that it is I who have sent you when you have brought the people out of Egypt, you will worship God on this mountain. Moses said, well, geez, God, suppose I go to the Israelites and say to them, the God of your father sent me to you, and they ask me, what is his name? Then what shall I tell them? God said, I am who I am. Pay attention. This is what you are to say to the Israelites. I am who sent you. Wow. You know, the interaction between God and Moses. I hope you experience that interaction sometime with God. You know, I hope you do because it, it, it'll happen. It'll happen. You know, 40 years in Egypt, Moses was pretty prideful. You know, he was, he he was going to be the prince of Egypt, possibly. But 40 years in the desert really humbled him uh, to the point where he says, you know, who am I, God? Who am I that I should go to the Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? Who am I? Now God is ready to, to speak and use Moses. God, Moses is actually in a great place because he's, he's got humbled by those 40 years in the wilderness. He wasn't the prince anymore. He, he was taking care of, of sheep and goats and trying to raise a family. You know, Moses was being humbled. He needed those 40 years. But, but what does God say? He says, he, God says, I will be with you. God says, it is I who have sent you. God said to Moses, I am who I am. I am has sent you. You know, God, God takes control of our life. Read verse 15 again. 15 says, God also said to Moses, Say to the Israelites, The Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever, the name you shall call me from generations to generations. God's not messing around. God has a plan for Moses. God has a plan for you. He's speaking to you right now, here and now because he has a plan for you to stand up and, and fulfill his will in your life. You know, when we doubt ourselves, uh, and let's read about those doubts in Exodus 3, 11 through 15. God also said to Moses, excuse me, I get the wrong thing. Say to the Israelites, the Lord your God... The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, there we go. Moses said to God, suppose I go to the Israelites and say to them, the God of your fathers has sent me to you, and then they ask me, uh, what is your name? What is his name? <laughs> then what shall I tell them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. This is what you are to say to the Israelites. I am has sent uh, to you. And so can you imagine and, and picture this, the grin on Moses' face as he was writing the very words of these scriptures, re recollecting how he was talking to God, how he was sort of negotiating with God, while all the time Moses, by the Holy Spirit, is writing these very words down that you're reading in your Bible. You know, I, can, I sort of picture, you know, it's all, almost like I remember my dad, how my dad told me, uh, one of these days you're going to go through this, Rick, just like I did, you know, when I was your age, and and I'm laughing at my father for saying it. But, you know, here God has inspired Moses to write these things. And Moses is recollecting. I can just picture Moses' face and as he said, man, I argued with God. What was I thinking? What was I thinking? We do it all the time. 
We do it all the time. We, we, we compromise. We justify. We do it all the time without even knowing it. You know, so Moses all of a sudden realized, hey, this is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, my father. I, I, I got to carry on what God is going to have me do, and the same thing applies to us. Let's look at 1 Corinthians 1, 23 through 27. <clears throat> Here we go. But we preach Christ crucified. Hear what Paul says and take it in. But we preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to the Gentiles. But to those whom God has called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than human wisdom, and the weakness of God is stronger than human strength. Brothers and sisters, listen to this. Think of what you were when you were called. Not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many of you were influential. Not many of you were noble birth. But God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. God chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. Amen. And to, I say that because, you know, I, I feel pretty weak right now. I, I'll be honest. I feel pretty weak. But, boy, am I strong in the Lord. It's as simple as that, you know. I, I do. I, I, I have felt weak for a few months, but I have been on fire for the Lord. And it's only the Holy Spirit. It's only God's Word. It's only the fellowship of brothers and sisters. It's only a great family. That's, that's what inspires us all, you know, that, that fellowship. And, and I pray that you would feel that, and you would be part of, of God's, God's incredible family. Because, you know, when, when we are weak, you know, you, you, you can, you, you, you sort of, stumble and bumble and you feel sorry for yourself but boy you know when i'm weak i get up in the middle of the night and i stop praying i do stop praying i said man god you're gonna get me through this i don't know how we're gonna do it i don't know how we're gonna preach today i don't know how we're gonna teach today i don't know how, but i know you're gonna do it and he does he does it's the power of the holy spirit letting the word pray to him pray to the creator of the universe that he can do it because i can't but he can and he'll do the same thing for you he'll do the same thing for you you know, and when we are strong, you know, I've been there. I said, I can do all things. <laughs> I leave out the part through, strength, through, through Christ who strengthens me. And I, and I just say, I can do all things. I know this. I'm all set. I'm busy. That's crazy to say that. That's foolish talk. Moses and Paul, heroes of the Bible, realized that God and only God could move through them. That they knew that. They realized it. Can you imagine without Moses and Paul and Christ and all the heroes of the Bible that we were, what, what would we be doing? We, we are so inspired by God's word. It's amazing what God will do when we humble ourselves and say that I fall, the great I am, the great I am. Third point, excuses, excuses, excuses. And, uh, <laughs> we've all made them, but Moses was a master of it. Moses was a master of it. Exodus 4, verse 1. Moses answered, What if they do not believe me or listen to me and say, The Lord did not appear to you? Moses, how, how can you say that, Moses? You just spoke with God just a few verses ago. You know, you, you, you were sorry in the burning bush. How can you say that, Moses? We do the same thing. We come to church, we get all fired up and energized, and we go right out the door. Tomorrow we'll be doing the same thing we did last Monday. I do the same thing. You know, don't, don't make excuses. Get fired up. Exodus 4, 10 through 17, a few more excuses. Moses said to the Lord, Pardon your servant, Lord. I have never been eloquent, neither in the past nor since you have spoken to your servant. I am slow of speech and tongue. Uh, th this guy was educated with the Egyptians who were the smartest people in the world, by the way, for 40 years. So here he is saying to God, I can't talk. <laughs> the Lord said to him, who gave human beings their mouths? Who makes them deaf or mute? Who gives them sight or makes them blind? It is, is it not I, the Lord? Now go, and I will help you speak, and will teach you what to say. But Moses said, Pardon your servant, Lord. That's pretty funny how he could say that, but he does. Pardon your servant, Lord. Please send someone else. Well, then the Lord's anger burned against Moses, and he said, What about your brother? Aaron the Levite I know he can speak well he is already on his way to meet you and he will be glad to see you you shall speak to him and put words in his mouth 
I will help both of you speak and will teach you what to do. He will speak to the people for you, and it will be as if he were your mouth and as if you were God to him. Pretty interesting exchange there. Um, so as I said, Moses was super well educated for 40 years. So all of a sudden, his brains fell out of his, his head. That's all I can tell you. I, I mean, I just can't figure it out. You know, I, even I remember a few things I learned at Conville. So, you know, and it's just sort of funny how, how Moses all of a sudden can't talk. But, you know, we all know that uh, what we make excuses. Um, you know, I, I, I've heard this so many times. I can't pray. I don't know how to pray. Oh, geez. Rick, will you teach me how to pray? I go, you knucklehead. All you got to do is talk to God. Come on. You know, I mean, we've heard the excuses. I, I can't read the Bible. You know, I've heard that many times. You've got the, so many different translations that you can understand. It's not even funny. But read the Bible. Read the Bible. We hear that excuse. I can't even show up for church or a Bible study. Really, uh, you know, excuses, excuses. Uh, Lord knows I don't want to host a Bible study at home or, or you know, be, participate. Uh, you may notice that God will take care of those excuses if you trust in him he will please trust in God don't trust in your own opinion and your own you know, thinking sometimes because we get thinking uh, we overthink things we, we come up with excuses we compromise notice that you know and, and what's funny with Moses here uh, God got mad God got mad he's gotten mad at me before I know he has he's got mad when, 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 I, when I have the talent to do something and I don't do it, God gets mad. He gets even with me. I, I had someone the other day said, Rick, God's mad at me. I said, you're right. You're right. <laughs> and and, and, and she, she sort of looked at me. I said, you, you haven't gone to church. You've talked to me about going to church for, th for three months. You haven't shown up. And come on, God is mad at you. And, and so she didn't have much to say, but, uh, you know, that was my chance of, of witnessing to her and, and saying, hey, yeah, God is mad. You haven't been doing what he wants you to do. You know, so God does get mad. You know, the Lord's anger burned against Moses. I, I can imagine Moses sort of going back as, as God's anger was burning against him. I can't imagine what that must have felt like. But, you know, then God, you know, he calms down. God does calm down, you know. And we're, we're glad he does because he's a God of mercy and grace. And he says, forget it, Moses, I'm going to, I'm going to work with Aaron. <laughs> forget it, Moses. You know, I, I, can, I can just see if someone said to me, forget it, Rick, I'm going to use your brother Lee. I go, really? <laughs> You're going to use my brother Lee instead of me? Come on, God. <laughs> I feel wicked. I'm, I'm lower than low. You know, so, but that's what God does. You won't do it, he'll use somebody else. He'll use somebody else. And, and, and that somebody else may inspire you to get back on track. And that's what it did to Moses. We're not giving up on Moses. You know, Aaron really took a secondary role. Moses was the man. You know, but God had to say, hey, you want to do it? I'm gonna, here, here, comes, here comes Aaron. He'll take over. So Exodus chapter 6, 28 through, uh, and to chapter 7, verse 2. <clears throat> Some more. Um, God is t talking to Moses. Now when the Lord spoke to Moses in Egypt, he said to him, I am the Lord. Tell Pharaoh, king of Egypt, everything I tell you. And notice, uh, I am the Lord, tell Pharaoh, little king of Egypt. Uh, he's not the big king of Egypt. You know, he's not the big king. God's the big king. Get the little king of Egypt, everything I tell you. But Moses said to the Lord, since I speak with faltering lips, why would Pharaoh listen to me? Then the Lord said to Moses, see, I have made you like God to Pharaoh, and your brother Aaron will be your, uh, be your prophet. You are to say everything I command you, and your brother Aaron is to tell Pharaoh to let the Israelites go out of this country. Wow, you know, here it is. Uh, God's telling Moses, um, speak my words. Speak my words. All right, stop, stop, stop using excuses. Uh, when, when are we going to step out on faith, I ask you? When are you going to step out on faith and do something God really wants you to do? It's time. It's time. Don't wait. You know, God is saying, these words are my words, not Rick's words. They're not my, not, they're not my words. They're his words. I can't preach passionately without him, his words. Because my words are useless. His words are awesome. 
His words are awesome. Long time ago, I started preaching when I was 25 years old, which was comical because, uh, you know, I wasn't raised in the church, by the way, you know, and everybody thinks I it was a great Christian and all that. I wasn't raised in the church. I, I've actually, I, I, what I, you know what I used to like to read? Comic books. That was my favorite book, comic books, you know. So I, I, I like superheroes and, and that fantasy world and all that. So, so anyways, when Diane came to the Lord when we were about 20, and Nick had just been born, and uh, Diane says, I'm going to go get baptized in the lake, and, you know, Winslow's going to baptize me. I knew Winslow. I said, you've been baptized already. You don't need to do that, honey. Come on. We're all set. You know, we're, we've got a happy life. I'm a great carpenter. You've got a nice house. We've got family started. You don't need to do that. Diane didn't, didn't even listen to me for one second. I'm so thankful. She, she went for it. Cause, you know why? Because the Holy Spirit got a hold of her. She went for it. What an example she was to me. And uh, I pray you could be that same example, whether it be in your family, at work, wherever it may be, you can be that example. You know, but it's funny. So they, they said to me, we didn't have a preacher back when I was 25 at the old Antrim Church of Christ down the road there, Brown Church. And so uh, it was me and my brother Lee and whoever else we could get to do it. And so believe it or not, my brother Lee was far more passionate about the Lord than I was. So he was showing me up. So he was, he was preaching. He, he was a lousy preacher, but he was preaching. So anyway, so I, I had to do it. So you know what I did? I just read the Bible. I didn't know what to do. I read the Bible. I could, you can't go wrong reading the Bible. You know, it wasn't a great lesson, but it was a great lesson for me because I read it from the Bible. I don't even remember what I preached about, but I read, read it from the Bible. I, I might have commented like 20 words, and I spoke for 20 minutes, and the other, other uh, you know, 18 minutes was all reading God's word that pertained to whatever I was talking about. I don't remember. But, it, it, you know, I did it. I stepped out on faith. And that's what I'm telling you today. Take that road less travel because I had no seminary. I, I didn't even know where uh, Philippians was. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I didn't know where any of that was. But uh, we didn't have a preacher. My brother showed me up. I had to get up. We were leaders. We did it. And, uh, and we stepped on faith and we took that road less travel. And I'm so glad I did you know, I'm so glad I did probably have preached, I don't know, probably three or 4,000 lessons. And, uh, you know, I'm still trying to learn and get better. Nicholas is outdoing me every week. You know, he's just preaching his, his heart out. And so he inspires me on to be a better preacher, a better teacher. But th that's what I mean about taking the road less traveled. Be inspired by one another. Don't just be set in your ways. Get out of your comfort zone and do something special. So anyways, when we stand on God's word, great things happen. That's what is... God is going to tell Moses. Look at the excuse uh, making Moses. The Lord spoke to Moses. He says, I am lo the Lord. Tell Pharaoh, notice, little king of Egypt, everything I will tell you. In verse 30, Moses still has his doubts. But, you know, notice the turning point. Notice the turning point. Moses is starting to take that road less traveled. He's starting to, to get it. He's saying, Say, man, I better, uh, better have my faith in, in God. About time I walk by faith in God. Moses is thinking that. Too, so, I mean, he sees the burning bush. He's, he's probably even sees Jesus Christ in, in, a, in a different form. He's feeling the Holy Spirit. He's seeing it. So by faith, Moses, number four, Hebrews 11, 23 through 29. By faith, Moses, here we go. Is a turning point. By faith, Moses' parents hid him for three months after he was born because they saw he was no ordinary child and they were not afraid of the king's edict. By faith, Moses, when he had grown up, refused to be known as the son of Pharaoh's daughter. He chose to be mistreated along with the people of God rather than to enjoy the fleeting pleasures of sin. He regarded disgrace for the sake of Christ as of greater value than the treasures of Egypt because he was looking ahead to his reward. Amen. By faith, he left Egypt, not fearing the king's anger. He persevered because he saw him who was invisible. I like that. He saw him who was invisible. By faith, he kept the Passover and the application of blood so that the destroyer of the firstborn would not touch the firstborn of Israel. By faith, the people passed through the Red Sea as on dry land, but when the Egyptians tried to do so, they were drowned. 
great scriptures from Hebrews. Read about those heroes of faith. Heroes of faith. I say to you, walk by faith and not by sight. Start living what you, what you talk about. Start changing the way you walk. Start it right now. I try to get better for the Lord every day because I can't sit still. I can't because there's so many sa- souls to save. There's so many people to share God's w- word with. It's, this is great today, but we've got to be jump-started from here to go on and make a difference. Read Exodus. Back to Exodus 14, 10 through 16. Here we go. Get your, script, get your highlighters out. It's good stuff. Don't do it now. Do it later. As Pharaoh approached the Israelites, looked up, and they were, there were the Egyptians marching after them. They were terrified and cried out to the Lord. They said to Moses, Was it because they were no graves in Egypt that you brought us up the desert to die? What a bunch of wimps. Come on, what have you done to us by bringing us out of Egypt? They were petrified. They had no faith whatsoever. Thank God for Moses. Here we go. Didn't we say to you in Egypt, leave us alone, let us serve the Egyptians? It would have been better for us to serve the Egyptian than to die in the desert. Moses answered the people, do not be afraid. Stand firm and you will see the deliverance the Lord will bring you today. The Egyptians you see today, you will never see again. Whoa, the Lord will fight for you. You need only to be still. Take a deep breath. (laughs) You only need to be still. The Lord said to Moses, Why are you crying out to me? (laughs) Whoa. Tell the Israelites to move on. Raise your staff. Stretch out your hand over the sea to divide the water so that the Israelites can go through the, uh, the sea on dry ground. Wow. Amen. Now God is testing the faith of the Israelites. Can you feel that? They sort of failed for a while. But Moses didn't. Moses didn't. You know, sometimes, no, I think all the time, we need to pay attention to godly leaders. We really do. We need to pay attention to godly leaders. I love how the guys led the Lord's Supper, how, how the people get up and pray passionately. We need to listen to godly leaders because we can be like those Israelites and be just drowning in our own sorrows and, and uh, shortcomings. You know, I hear it all the time. I can't do this. I, I'm going through that. I've done this. You know, we, c- we can't be drowned in our shortcomings like the Israelites. Who was drowned? Egypt. All those guys on those chariots, they were drowned. The Israelites walked through on dry ground. Let's read ahead. Exodus 14, 19 through 22. Again, get the highlights out. Then the angel of the Lord, who had been traveling in front of Israel's army, withdrew and went behind them. This is probably Jesus Christ. All right, this is... The angel of the Lord had been traveling in front of them, withdrew and went behind them. He was in front of them, he was behind them. The pillar of a cloud also moved. Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand over the sea so that the waters may flow back over the Egyptians and their chariots and horsemen. Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and at daybreak the sea went back to its place. The Egyptians were fleeing toward it, and the Lord swept them into the sea. The water flowed back and covered the chariots and horsemen. The entire army of Pharaoh that had followed the Israelites into the sea, not one of them survived. But the Israelites went through the sea on dry ground with a wall of water on their right and a wall on their left. The day, that day the Lord saved Israel from the hands of the Egyptians and Israel saw the Egyptians lying dead on the shore. And when the Israelites saw the mighty hand of the Lord displayed against the Egyptians, the people feared the Lord and put their trust in him and in Moses, his servant. See why we need to put our trust in the Lord and also those who are leading godly Bible studies, godly lessons, those who are praying godly prayers. We need to pay attention. You know, and notice uh, the angel of the God, most likely, like I said, was the incarnate Christ. How God... Jesus and the Holy Spirit were all working with Moses in the Israelites. Just amazing. If you really read that and study that, how incredible it was. And, and then listen to, notice the angel of, the God, angel of God traveling in front of him and behind him in verse 19. Still in 19, the pillar of cloud, most likely the Holy Spirit, moved in front and stood behind them. And, and the cloud was just incredible, sort of like the Holy Spirit and comes between the armies of Egypt and Israel. All night, darkness on Egypt, but all night, light on God's people. 
Do you see that scripture? All night, darkness on Egypt. All night, light on God's people. That's how it is with your life. When you serve God all night long, it's light. Serve Satan all night long, it's dark. And, and here comes the faith in verse 21 of Moses. He stretches out his hand over the sea. But notice, who does a miracle? All night long, the Lord drove back the sea with a strong east wind. Moses held his hand up. God did all the work. The Holy Spirit, by the power, held back the sea. Moses just did what God told him to do. And, I, and Israel crossed on dry ground. They didn't go through the mud. They crossed on dry ground. It really speaks to the power of the Trinity. Like I said, God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit are leading the way. So what did Moses do? He listened to God, and he stretched out his hand. Sometimes when I pray, I stretch out my hand. I, I can't help it because I just, I just, I don't know why I do it, but it's, it just feels like the power of God, you know, maybe like Moses. But what did the Israelites do back in Exodus 13 and 14? Did we get that scripture? 13 and 14 of chapter 14. Back, 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 back. There we go. 13, there we go. Moses answered the people, don't be afraid. Stand firm and you will see the deliverance the Lord will bring you today. The Egyptians you see today, you will never see them again. The Lord will fight for you. You only need to be still. The Lord said to Moses, why are you crying out? Tell the Israelites to move on. Raise your staff. Stretch out your hand over the sea. Divide the water so the Israelites can go through on dry ground. That's, that's good. So number one, don't be afraid telling you don't be afraid brothers and sisters stand for, firm and you will see stand firm and you will see please you see those Egyptians today you won't see them tomorrow <laughs> I ain't kidding you you see what the devil's trying to do to you today you won't see him tomorrow you stand on God's word you won't the Lord will fight for you you only need to be still you know, sometimes it's sitting in the pews and just hearing God's word and, and going home and praying and say, God, show me the way. Show me and get to that Bible study and, and sit patiently through the, some of the stuff that we do. And he will lead you through that. And sometimes you just got to be still. Um, you know, again, Moses stretches out his hand. What does the Lord do? He leads Moses. The Lord swept the Egyptians into the sea. That day the Lord saved Israel. This day the Lord will save you when you put him first and take that road less traveled. You will be, salvation will be just unbelievable. Unbelievable. It'll be glory after glory after glory. So what did Israelites do? They went through on dry land with a wall of water on the right and their left. That day the Lord saved them. Israel saw all the Egyptians laying dead. Israel saw the mighty hand of God. The people feared the Lord and put their trust in him in Moses and his his servant Moses was his servant Moses proved to the Israelites he was going to be their leader he was incredible and th that's just what they needed and sometimes that's what you and I need we need that that push that shove that spiritual lift that only the Holy Spirit can give sometimes through a brother or sister let me say this again what what faith that's really what faith should look like you know, do you see the mighty hand of God working in your life I ask you that right now you will you can. It's right here. It starts right now. Do you live in trust in that God Almighty? How's, how's your life going? Are you living and trusting in Him Almighty? Are you willing to be a servant as Moses was? You know, Moses stuttered. Moses gave excuses. But in the end, Moses led them through the, the Red Sea. He was their inspirational leader. You can be the same thing in your family, in your, in your job. Wherever it is, you can be that Moses. You know, how do you travel the road less traveled? You know, back to Scripture, Matthew 7, 7 through 8. And I'm going to bring up my little, my little uh, you know, thing here. And uh, Matthew 7, 7 through 8, I'm going to read it again. Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receives. The one who seeks, finds. And to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. And... Uh, I sort of like Max Lucado, as most of you guys know, most of everybody knows, but in the front of every one of Max's study guides, he uses Ask, Seek, and Knock as a great way to study the Bible. I always encourage you to ask.
for wisdom by the power of the Holy Spirit. Ask. Don't, don't, don't be a know-it-all. Ask for help. I need help. I know you do. Ask. Seek, and you will find. Proverbs says, search for it as hidden treasure. You know, really valuable, the, the word of God. James 1.25 says, whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues in it, not forgetting what they heard, but doing it, they will be blessed in what they do. You know, God's word is awesome, and you will be blessed in what you do. Matthew 7, 13, and 14, enter through the narrow gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the road that leads to destruction, and many enter through it. But small is the gate, and narrow the road that leads to life, and only a few find it. So here's the other, other part of the, the two roads. So we got Jesus in the, the narrow part. He sanctifies us. He sets us apart. He makes us holy. Then he gives us life, and life abundantly. See, see what can happen? See what can happen? That's, that can happen to you. Happen to me. Happen to me. So let's uh, trust and take that road less traveled uh, and uh, go through the narrow gate. Narrow gate is Jesus. He's the only way. Put him first in everything you do. Uh, a true Christian uh, who lives by faith will uh, change everybody's life around them. Uh, Psalms. I'm going to wrap up with Psalms 40. And uh, last, last verse. And I know I gave Nick the, the wrong uh, scriptures, but I'm going to read them anyways. I'm going to expound on what you're going to see up front. front. Uh, Psalms 40. Four through eight. And see if you don't hear Moses in these scriptures. Blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, who does not look to the proud. To those who turn aside, who does not look to the proud, to those who turn aside to false gods. Many, Lord my God, are the wonders you have done, the things you have planned for us. Think about all the wonders God did for Moses and what he's going to do for you. None can compare with you God, were I to speak and tell all your deeds, that would be too many to declare. We could preach on for five hours and not, not to get done telling about what God has done, right? Sacrifice and offering you did not desire, but my ears you have opened. I hope your ears have opened today. Burn offerings and sin offerings you did not require. Then I said, here I am. I have come. It is written about me in the scroll. Here's the scroll. I desire to do your will, my God. Your law is written within my heart. I pray you take this lesson to heart today. It's uh, it inspired me. We'll do a little more on it next week. We might get into Joshua and, and Jesus and, and the mighty uh, Paul and uh, wrap up with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you. Thank you for the lesson.